Hey everyone, welcome to a little a little thing I used to do at Zelda Informer, but uh, we're not talking about Zelda today. <laughs> we're doing the Nintendo Prime Reacts. It's our very first ever reaction series. Uh, generally, this only happens when there's been really, really big game-changing news or a big event like E3 or, in this case, a Nintendo Direct. And today, or at least when we're recording this, I, I don't know if it's actually going to come out today on YouTube. Uh, we will be talking about the arms direct that happened and I am joined by 5J Gaming. Hey guys, I have a small intro myself here since we have separate audios being recorded. Oh no, yep. no, it, we'll sync these up. Okay, logistics. Hi guys, 5J over on Twitch. Welcome. I stream yep. on Nintendo Prime over the weekend. Yes, and we were going to have our other video guy who does some stuff on YouTube uh, Mr. Daniel on, but I had a power outage, and I'm pretty sure he fell asleep by the time my power came back. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we're here to talk to you guys about ARMS and our reaction to it and our thoughts, uh, and a little bit of Splatoon. Yeah. So, we both saw the direct. I, I saw it as it was happening. Um, I was getting my kids ready for bed, so it was a little hectic, but I've rewatched <laughs> it a couple times since. Uh, w w what's your general opinion of ARMS at this point? So, ARMS, it's been really hard for me to really get a great grasp on what ARMS really is, and they've been starting to flesh that out a little bit. I've been so lukewarm on the whole thing uh, up until recently, and I've started to spark a little bit of interest. And I think that's kind of the same impression I had about Splatoon. So, I, I now am a, I'm a Splatoon fan, and I'm, I'm thinking they might get me when I least expect it here. So, there's... Um, they're adding more modes that they're showing to us here, and they're adding more characters and more depth. And uh, I'm starting to be intrigued, and I, I think I might get it on launch. Maybe. Well, it's, it's one of those things that I think Splatoon, when they first announced it, it was uh, instantly praised by basically the media yeah. who, who got to go a little hands-on with it. Uh, yeah. And it almost made sense, right? Like, it, okay, it's a territory shooter. Right. Got it. You know, yeah. there's not a lot of these out there, especially a lot of popular ones, but it is something that people could wrap their heads around. Yeah, it was kind of um, like uh, Tony Hawk was at the graffiti mode or whatever kind of <laughs> thing, you know, just trying to yeah. paint the town. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a concept that was easily understood from the word go. Now, right. it, you know, it took some flesh. You know, a lot of people were saying, oh, whatever. You know, it's one of those side games. It's going to be like the that uh, Steam game they created, there were people ended up not liking that on 3DS. Uh, but, oh, yeah. Codename Steam? Yeah, Codename Steam. And the thing is, I love that game. I think that game <laughs> yeah. is fantastic. But yeah, again, it's, it's a very niche game. Yep. Um, so, whatever. And I guess the worry with Splatoon at the time was that, oh, it's too cartoony, it's too for kids. It, it, they're trying to aim this game at kids too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to alienate Nintendo's core audience, which isn't kids, despite what people think. <laughs> um I think our channel is also kind of proof of that. Uh, most of our audiences are not children. <laughs> right. But uh, at least according were. to what Google tells me. But they know. were, right? So they were at one originally point, right? Wait, we, we grew were up on a it? child grabbed by <laughs> Nintendo, and we've just hung along for the whole ride. Sure. Uh, so Splatoon kind of found its footing. The more and more we saw of it, the, the more, you know, it really was about E3. Uh, when they showed it mm -hmm. off at E3, that's really when things kind of exploded and people started realizing, okay, no, this is just a really good game. Yeah. For all ages, it, not just kids. Yeah. Um, and ARMS felt weird when they introduced it because, <laughs> yep. one, we thought we moved beyond motion gaming oh, outside yes. of virtual reality. And here they are showing off what looks like an improved version of Wii Boxing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it really turned people off because, one, people are kind of over motion controls outside yep. of virtual reality. And two, it just... The, there wasn't anything shown in the little bit that we got during the... I think it was in January, or was it? Yeah, flight? yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Jan the January uh, little, I don't know, event. It wasn't a Yeah, direct, it was like the big whatever. Switch unveiling event. Um, they... It, it just didn't look very appealing. Um, Agreed, yeah. And it, it didn't look bad. It was just one of those things where we didn't know enough about it, and right. it looked so simplistic. And when media got to play it at the various events, a lot of them were like, yeah, it played fine, but I mean, it was just okay. Yeah. We, oh, my, we don't, my... we don't, there wasn't much there. 
You know, right. and, and the fear was like, okay, it's going to be like the the next Wii Boxing or like kind of like a, a, a new IP version of Punch Out. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's just, it, it's not going to be, it's not something to, to write home about, right? It's like a second right. tier game. It's it's not a big AAA experience like Splatoon ended up becoming. Yeah. And if we had not learned, you know, if you were on the fence about ARMS this whole time, um, if you're not sold by the end of this direct now, then you're never going to be sold on what this game is. Yeah, because that's probably true. It, yes, you don't have to use motion controls to play, and they've actually detailed out how that works. We haven't seen anyone actually play it without motion controls yet. Yeah, and but, I'm having trouble conceptualizing how you're going to be able to have as much control with motion without motion as with motion. Well, it sounds like what it's going to be is that... Um, you, you when you play it with like the, the pro controller or just a standard control setup, yeah. um, you're going to get rocked by anyone who's any good at the motion stuff. Exactly, and that's kind of how Splatoon is too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, Splatoon. Like, like you can do traditional twin stick aiming, but anyone who has mastered the gyro aiming, they're going to wreck you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's okay because it kind of you know it's two, two different demographics you know like people who are going to get really good with the motion stuff those are going to be the guys that are going to be like playing this game in tournaments and going to evo and and doing a lot of crazy things with this you game. you really think this is going to show up at evo it almost got voted into evo for this year and the game's not even out yet wow that's impressive yes so uh it's it's probably going to get into it next year though um, to be fair it is such a different kind of fighting game that yeah. Evo almost needs that kind of variety. Well, and know? the big thing is, it's a fighting game. Yeah. And yes. if you don't like fighting games, you're probably not going to be into this. It doesn't have the appeal of like a Smash Bros where your favorite Nintendo characters get together and, and hash it out. Right. Um, Here's new. This is a game lady. that like you need to like fighting games to like this game. Yeah. Um, but it's really cool because it's like a unique take on the fighting genre. Because in the past, a lot of it's just been... You fight on a 2D plane and right. go at it. I mean, even Smash Bros. is like that. Um, There's and the games that have, have revolved yeah. around like a 3D plane, it was really still just a 2D plane rotating in 3D. Yeah, that's fair. Yep. Pretty much. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of games that have done a 3D type fighting game very well. I mean, I think... Uh, I haven't played it yet, but I, I heard Pokken Tournament is, is, is kind of does it okay. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd say that it's still mostly like a Soul Calibur-like experience. Yeah, that, that's what that it, what I saw in the footage. I was like, it still felt more like it was just yeah. a 2D plane that rotated. Totally. In a 3D world. Whereas this is like, no, this is a fully 3D like arena you can walk around in. You can destroy things. Right. You can jump on top of things, hide behind things. Uh, it's a fully interactive kind of environment. Yeah, and I haven't played Power Stone, but from what I'm seeing, that sounds like Power Stone would be pretty close equivalent to this style sure. of fighting. So free and open. Yeah, and, and that's the thing with this game is, one, it, it's he- it has a heavy focus. Like, your attacks are all about the extendable arms and the various ways you can customize it. Yep. And the unique abilities that each one of the characters have and what they add to the items and the elements and... Just everything about this game, like what we learned today, it's it seems extremely hardcore to me. Like, yeah. like this is the kind of stuff that gets into serious like fighting events like Evo because right. it is that intricate and yeah. that that skill based, and- which is so strange because this Splatoon is the same way. If you're not taking it completely seriously, you're gonna be sniped every ten seconds by some guy half a mile away with an E leader. <laughs> And you have no idea what's going on. Well, and a fun and fact, s- Nintendo's trying to push Splatoon 2 now as an eSport, so... Yeah, they should. Uh, they really should. It has a very long following. It just keeps going and going. And it's it's huge in Japan. Yeah. Just, so, I, you know, and, and again, these for Splatoon 2 and ARMS, they are having, like, tournaments live streamed at E3. So, like, they're really pushing these games as, look, like, you could take these things seriously. And... Mm-hmm. You know, not you know, not just have your goofy fun fun with your friends in your house. You can also be like, no, like let's make big tournaments out of this, and you yeah. know, whatever. Well, and, and we'll see if Nintendo ends up pushing it into some of the cash cash tournaments out there and stuff. But uh, Arms just if like I'm not a big fighting genre fan, so Arms was always very like intriguing Casual, to yeah. me. But I wasn't also a big like you know shooting fan. Like I don't play a lot of shooters, right. and then yeah. I love Splatoon. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of one of those things where ARMS is intriguing enough that I'm probably going to end up picking it up day one uh, just because 
there's two things I like supporting in the video game industry. Uh, one, Nintendo. I like supporting <laughs> extremely, extremely high quality games because I want them yeah. to continue to exist. And two, I like supporting extremely high quality new IPs because yeah. I think that's wholly Fair. healthy for the industry. And a lot of consumers don't, you don't have to be like this. Like if you're not interested in arms, don't just buy it because it's a high quality AAA game from Nintendo. Like I'm right. not fanboying out here. I do the same thing <laughs> for PC games, for any games, you know, for Xbox and PlayStation. Like I'll go out and buy games that are high quality new IPs because I want the industry. I'm I want I'm speaking to the industry with my wallet. I want them to yeah, know exactly. we want these kind of games. And if people aren't buying them, then they're just not going to get those kind of games. Like it's the same reason I bought Watch Dogs, even though it was just okay. Sure. Because I saw the potential for it to become something more. And then Watch Dogs 2 came out and it kind of proved, yeah, it can be more. And it's apparent how hard Nintendo is trying with Splatoon and with ARMS to really make a solid new IP. There is so much personality and character in these trailers. They had like a, a weird, funny intro to this um, direct where, you know, everyone knows uh, you have extendable arms, but nobody knows when they happened. Everyone just woke up and they suddenly had extendable arms. It's like, what? They're just adding such weirdness, you know, yeah, in the that backstory Jap- Japanese is so way. Funky. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Uh, uh, and the spring faces and people's made out of noodles and now like some yeah. lady. Yes, yeah, man. Like... Is his hair real? Well, no one thinks <laughs> it is, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. What's the deal? <laughs> so wacky. Yeah. And it, somebody it, looks like Ridley in the loader, but with stretchy arms. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And what I like about the game is it's really embracing what it is, right? It's not trying to like force like, like a lot of games that have this kind of attitude with it. They, they try to make it really forceful. And in this game, it feels natural yeah um, totally. from what we've seen so far and it's one of those things that you know i, I don't know if this is going to get as big as splatoon did um and maybe it will because the switch is ultimately probably going to sell more than the wii u did so maybe it'll find a bigger consumer base than the first splatoon. oh then the okay yeah i see what you're saying then splatoon as a series i don't know about that but yeah i see what you mean the original well, yeah like splatoon, the sure. original splatoon sold over four million so i mean that's still <laughs> impressive i'm like what was it 13 yeah. million that yeah it was sold total it's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It's like a it's like a third of the audience bought it. Yeah. So it you know I don't know if Arms is going to get to a four million you know level, especially since it's releasing at a time when there isn't going to be a lot of switches on the market. But right. It it if nothing is clear from what we know about this game now, it is extremely high quality, very polished, packed with content, getting yes. tons of support post release completely for free. I love that. Um, more than even Splatoon. Like, when Splatoon got all of its post-release content for free, the problem, mm-hmm. and this this is a problem that I thought might happen with ARMS but doesn't appear to be, is that Splatoon kind of launched, uh, like, a, an unfinished game. Yeah, it, it did kind of feel bare bones. So they needed that content to come out for free. This game doesn't feel like it's launching unfinished. All of the modes <laughs> it comes with, all of the weapons it already has, yeah. the ten playable characters, that, that feels like a full game. And they're going to be releasing... More characters I'm, and more items and more stages. I'm probably more excited about the other modes they announced than just, like, the standard fighting. Like, I think it looks amazing that there's a basketball <laughs> mode that you have to grab your friend and chuck him through a basket. That's genius. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> crazy. And then, like, a volleyball mode where you're hitting yes. around a bomb. <laughs> that one looks really cool, too. I have like, a feeling I'm going to play volleyball a lot in this game. Well, that's the thing. And, and that's where ARMS is doing what Splatoon did in that it's reaching out to appeal to such a wide variety of people where mm-hmm. it has its super seriousness to it. Like, it has its its 1v1 ranked mode and, right. you know, it, its ability to do, like, you know, kind of tournament-style stuff and have 20 of your friends mode, play. Yeah. And, you know, be able to do, like, serious tournaments like EVO. But it's got this silliness to it as well that, like, oh, people could just goof around in volleyball mode. They can goof around in basketball mode. Right. You know, there's – you know, I know some people said they're a little disappointed by it, but they have, like, this Grand Prix mode. that That's their single player. Yeah, yeah. And when I saw some people uh, talk about how disappointed they were in the Grand Prix mode, I, I, I kind of sat back and I was like, you know, you know this is a fighting game, right? Yeah, I so mean, that like makes sense. It, it's basically a multiplayer game that the single player mode is always just a ladder, and yes. so this yep. is a ten this better. is a ten fight ladder. I, I, I mean, I know some single player like Mortal Kombat and stuff like they put story into it and all that stuff, but who cares? 
Well, there could be story, and, and there could be story. You know, it could know. be cut scenes. We don't. Who knows? This right. game has a lot of personality. There's probably Bark something. Bark and in Bite there. could have a whole storyline, and we'll, we won't know until it comes <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, but like this game's not going to be successful because of the, the single player. It's going to exactly. be successful because of the multiplayer. Yeah. And I, I have to say, like here I am, like glowing about this game when I don't even like fighting games. Like that's how impressed I am. And yeah. the game's also technically impressive too. Uh, yeah, outside of the art smooth. style being gorgeous, the animations for for a fighting game are just like at the top of the heap. Uh, and on top of that, the game runs a silky smooth 60 FPS. Is it locked? It is locked. Even in four players? No. So okay. <laughs> the game <laughs> is locked at 60 <laughs> FPS with one player, two player, three player. When you get to four, it drops everyone to 30. Sure. Um, and that's on, on a, that's on a single system because it can support the four players for a single system. Oh, so what if you do two on two systems? And, that is totally two, fine. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It'll, it'll be, be locked 60. 60. Yep. Okay. Oh, yep. that's good. Uh, at least that's what the Digital Foundry report said. Obviously, sure. it might not, you know, by the time the game comes out, maybe it won't be the case. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I feel like it's hard, to, get it's hard to know. Like, there's, the like no one really has review copies quite yet, so it's kind of like, yeah. you know. I mean, so some are doing previews, but you know, it, it's it's kind of one of those. I don't know if anyone has enough experience yet, but I mean, it's pretty much lock sixty, which is amazing. Uh, I yeah. heard that it doesn't run at ten eighty; it runs at nine hundred p and seven twenty p in handheld, obviously. <laughs> There was but, stuff like that with Xbox One and PS4, yeah. and this probably still going on, and people stopped caring. Yeah, you know? what, what, yeah, what matters to me is that it's a fighting game, so you have that lock 60 FPS for the serious stuff. And then on top of that, apparently, there might be some anti-aliasing in this game. Hmm. Which, you know, for most gamers, not that's not a, a big deal. But stuff. for Nintendo, Nintendo doesn't anti-alias like ever. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, look yeah, at Breath of the Wild, some... look at Mario Kart. You know, they don't do anti-aliasing, and yet it looks like they might have applied some anti-aliasing to this game. Um, That's So So is this made then by uh, more of those younger developers like Splatoon? Yes. Kept emphasizing, so this hey, is made by a younger team. From new people. Um, it's technically the team that made Mario Kart 8. Oh, Main okay. Arms. Now, uh, hmm. it, I, I heard some people talking about, uh, like, oh, you know, the anti-alias. Like, oh, my gosh. I'm like... Well, you got to remember, this is also the first major Nintendo game coming out that was made for Switch. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe yeah. was a port. Breath of the Wild was a true. port. That's true. So, and those are both Wii U games. Wii U didn't have any yes. anti-aliasing, so. Yeah. So, yeah. Fair point. So it's one of those things that, uh, you know, this might actually be a standard. Nintendo might be using anti-aliasing for Switch exclusive games. We'll find out with Splatoon 2, too, once the, those review yeah. copies get out there. Which, that also looks really smooth and yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we knew at the end of this direct we were going to get Splatoon 2, yep. uh, a trailer. We didn't know what the trailer was of. They didn't you know, let us know. Uh, yeah. They just said it was going to be there. And, man, does it look amazing. And this is, to, to be clear, totally. they showed off what single-player mode, I think they're calling it hero mode, is going to be. Yeah, they had like some weird little teaser at the beginning where you uh, followed around uh, Mari, and yep. she's like incognito. Uh, and then apparently she's who, what spurs on this particular campaign, and then they yeah she's like oh, I'm part of the stuff. Squid Sisters. She does that thing, and like oh, yeah, you don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't know who I am. Flip it out, <laughs> right? And man, it looks crazy. So, See, what did you think of the one player mode in the first Splatoon? I thought it was really good, but really short. Yeah, it felt like it was like an idea that they never fully fleshed out, and this looks like it's going to have a lot more variety for the kind of mechanics that you have to interact with to complete a level, Yeah, and it just looks more varied in general. Well, I always viewed the single player in the first game as it's essentially teaching you how to play Splatoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's really short. The story's, you know, whatever, the story wasn't that bad, but it was really short, uh, And the, but what made me forgive how short it was was the final boss in Splatoon. <laughs> that was a great boss that, fight. I mean, that might be what... Like, I'm even thinking about all the boss fights I had in Breath of the Wild. I don't think there's any that are better than what I faced in Splatoon at the end of the story mode. It was pretty sweet. That boss fight was awesome. I, I, I mean, off topic, but I didn't really struggle all that much with any of the bosses in Breath of the Wild. No, not me so either. I, I can agree that uh, that fight was challenging but intelligent in uh, Splatoon. Yes, and so I'm really curious how they're going to follow that up in Splatoon 2. But what I can say, uh, based on the little trailer they showed, is that, man, 
it looks like they I have taken the single player mode to a whole new level. Mm-hmm. It looks way more intense. It looks like there's way more variety in what the enemies are doing. Yeah. Uh, in, in level design, in platforming. And mm-hmm. that's what's crazy. Like, we're talking about a game that is built as a multiplayer territory shooter. Yeah. And single player is very much being built as a platformer with shooting elements. Yeah. Just an in, like, it's insane, awesome. like, Mario Sunshine, like, to the nth degree. Yeah. It, it, it looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'm not saying that people should buy Splatoon just to play single player, but I, no. I mean, we might find out it might be worth buying Splatoon just to play the single player on Splatoon 2. Um, yeah, it, it just looked fantastic. It. And we obviously don't know the rewards. There's going to probably be continued support post launch, like they're doing for ARMS. Um, oh, and they doubtless. did for the original Splatoon. Yeah. But it, it just looks fantastic. Overall, I, I got to say, I'm kind of glad they did this direct when they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I know some people might be, might feel like, oh, maybe they should have talked about this at E3, but we got to remember, ARMS basically comes out during E3. Right, yeah. Uh, and I think they have to the... keep us engaged all the while. They can't go two, three months without saying something new about the Switch. they got to keep something coming. Yeah. So it's one of those things that, like, do you really want them to just talk about ARMS and Splatoon 2 at E3? Because th- those yeah. are two big games that would eat up half of their presentation, and that's... No... Right, and, and, like and, we need and to a know month afterwards, they're both out, and then yeah. then what? They didn't yeah. say anything about the rest of the year. So like this is a very good timing for this direct. Uh, it lets them basically not have to talk about arms a ton during whatever their digital spotlight thing, Nintendo Spotlight. They shouldn't have to talk about arms much outside of like maybe a trailer and hey, it comes out this week. Uh-oh. Um, and then you know, I think probably I lost a new Nate trailer on for the Splatoon two. And they might not even put a trailer for Splatoon two. They might even save those trailers for I the live stream audio. tournaments they're going to do for those games. Um, so they're already giving those games individual well, attention so much that they so might not shows even be me in, in there. Spotlight. Uh, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, other games, the, the new Xenoblade mechanics Chronicles that they showed us. So they kind of like Odyssey. dipped into you know, whatever else the different party elements. games they might have come in. I know NBA um, they kind of showed us, is I think about three FIFA. or four elements and before. Other other games um, might be in coming. previous. You know, we, we haven't heard trailers about the Skyrim version coming, but in this one they showed us six elements. Was it more? Uh, Might have been a lot of things we don't know about. And uh, I thought it was really interesting. Some of the elements kind of seem like they do the same thing, but uh, in general, I like that it's kind of um, that's how they add variety to the weapons. It's like, hey, yeah, this is a three missile shooter, but now this one has (laughs) a freezing element, and this one has like an exploding element, and they give you different boosts there. And (laughs) it's just a fun way to mix up the combat a little bit and make it a little more insane, you know. I, I love what they're doing with arms. It, yeah. It's You know what it, they didn't cover actually is the supers. They only did like a couple of supers in the previous trailers, but now there's ten characters. We probably yeah. haven't seen eight supers now. What what do they do? Yeah, no, I, I saw a few more of them because immediately after they put this uh direct up they released a, a new Nintendo minute. Oh, um I And that. those two and those two people was it Krista and uh I always forget the guy's name. Oh man! Anyways, those two guy, people Some bro. Uh, went at, at. I totally. I, I thing is, I'm, I'm gonna look it up right after. I'm like, oh yeah, right. Um, yeah. Those two people went at it and had like their own little mini infighting tournament, best two out of three matches or whatever. And <laughs> they played a new. They each played a new character every time, so we got to see six characters in action. I think. Nice. Um, and we, and all of them did their supers during the fight. Um, oh, awesome! So we got to see what what, what some of that was for, and the, and they played some of the new characters. So you got to see some of that stuff, um, you know, like the ones they showed off during the director. They showed off the one with the the with the robot cop guy and dog. Yeah, um, bark and bite. Re- very very I interesting like character. Like, <laughs> like I I don't know. Just a very very weird <laughs> character. Very I guess it fits with arms. He um, looks like he would really <laughs> mess with your strategy. Yeah, it's Same like, oh, thing. I'm kicking his butt, but his dog is behind me just right. punching away. <laughs> gets, a, gets an interrupt in there, and then suddenly you're on the defensive. Yeah. yeah. I, it's It just looks fun. And it looks like it, it's fun in a way that, like Splatoon was, where mm-hmm. you could just have a lot of fun just playing the game, or you could take it super, super serious, and the game works for whatever you want it to be. And in a lot of ways... I kind of view these games as um, 
kind of the next evolution of what Smash Bros. was. Like, Nintendo had Smash Bros. come out, and it was super fun, super casual, but it could be yeah. super serious. And then they yeah. never really did anything with that besides Mario Kart. And let's be honest, Mario Kart, for as serious as people want to take it, it's mostly just silly. Yeah, right? it's got that heavy rubber banding in there. I mean, there's yeah, no way and, around and, it. And people don't like the rubber banding for the serious portion of thing, whereas in ARMS, there's no rubber banding. There, there, there's no tricks here. It's skill, yeah. if you want it mm-hmm. to be serious. Um. And that that's what's really cool. Like Splatoon caters to the casuals and the hardcore, and it looks like Arms is going to be doing the same thing. And what I like about these kind of games is, is these almost feel like the Smash and Mario Kart, where you have one of these games per generation of hardware. Yeah. Um, and I know some people like there was someone on our Facebook page actually that got mad that oh Splatoon two looks too much like Splatoon one. I'm like, cause it's Splatoon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like I'm like far. Mario Kart Eight looks like Mario Kart Seven looks like Mario Kart Six. I what? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, like what these are just once a generation games. Like they don't they Although, don't reinvent the, the the wheel visually or gameplay wise. Like honestly, you know what though, to expect. I could see them putting out another Arms on the Switch, um, just just because it is a new um, franchise, and I feel like the Switch is going to have a nice long life. I could kind of foresee them doing like a new 3DS type thing, like, hey, it's the same system, but it has a better CPU, and now yeah. here's some exclusive games, and oh, look, here's ARMS 2 <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, no, I I don't think they're going to do that only because they're continuing support for ARMS for probably the next year or two, um, so that's going yeah, to increase fair. the longevity of that game. So I don't know. I mean, I could but be wrong. But it's also coming out right at launch versus Splatoon, which came out, you know, a couple, two, three years sure. after launch. I, I think so, a lot of a it lot depends. Of a lot of it depends on on a theoretical. Is there going to be a hardware refresh? Yeah, exactly. Because um, if there isn't a hardware refresh, well, by twenty twenty, the switch might not look so hot anymore. Um, I'm not just saying yeah. that to like be like whatever. I'm just saying like phones and tablets and everything are going to easily surpass it by then, basically. Right, um, and and for the large part, and at that a lot and at that do. point, Nintendo either needs to decide they're going to continue with the switch and do like, you know, the new. The new Nintendo Switch or whatever, whatever. They better drop that new moniker. Come on. <laughs> I know. I I don't think it's dumb, but whatever. They love it in Japan, apparently. Anything that, that that's what I'm saying. So if they call it up. the new Nintendo Switch, it'll probably sell anyways. Yeah, um, exactly. At least in Japan. <laughs> and then you also be like, what the heck? A new Nintendo Switch? You mean the one I just bought? No, no, no. The, the new new Nintendo Switch. Exactly. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Come on, Nintendo. Anyways, uh, just to kind of summarize it up, I mean... I, what are your general feelings about this direct? Was it was it good? Was it bad? Was it you need to see more? I think this did the best job so far of telling us enough about arms to really see that it was more than just a wacky extendable arm fighting game that it looked like. It wasn't just the um the Wii Boxing uh upgrade. You know what it actually kind of feels like to me is an evolution of uh punch out. Where it's a, a multiplayer take, uh, you're not just fighting a computer player and you memorize the pattern, but mm-hmm. you are facing wacky characters that have weird punches, <laughs> and now you're one of the wacky characters with weird punches, and you have to find, you know, all the weak spots, and some folks jump, and some folks kick, and some... I, I think it's it's finally become something that I'm actually interested in, and previously, I was mildly curious at best. So I, I think that they did a great job of finally showing us enough to make this a game that people are going to want to buy. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I, I think this is, you know, if you can't tell by my excitement for ARMS and Splatoon 2 at this point, uh, they this Direct was about as perfect as it can be for the type of game that ARMS is. Yeah. Um, and as I said, if you're on the fence and you haven't seen the Direct, watch the Direct. You should know by the end of it if this is the game for you. Um, yep. anyways, that's going to do it. I, I, I'm glad you guys, thanks for tuning in to, uh, our first ever Nintendo prime reacts. If you like this video, you know what to do on YouTube. Give it, give it that big thumbs up. Or you know, if, if, if you think we're idiots, you can give us a big thumbs down. <laughs> um, subscribe, you know, follow, uh, five J gaming over there on Twitch. Uh, also Nintendo prime on Twitch and yeah. Oh yeah. You can follow me on Twitter too. At Nate Jance. I don't really pub my Twitter very much. I should, I should probably do more of that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a hard thing. You know, we, we both uh, are pretty busy folks, 
So we're doing this as much as we can in the time that we have. And the social media aspect, I feel, is the, the part that's the toughest to do, <laughs> to really be consistent on. But uh, it is crucial. So we're trying. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it for this Nintendo Prime Reacts. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll catch you next time.